welcome back to World of War News, everyone. I hope you're having a fantastic day, because this week we've gotten some pretty big news. We got two dev blogs for premium aircraft that are pretty high-ranking vehicles. These being some of the first dev blogs for the patch have gotten quite a few people excited for what could come later on. But let's not put it off for too long. The premium for the U.S. was the F-5C uh, Shikoshi Tiger. The dev blog on the subject itself was quite sparse, not telling a whole lot of information. You actually found out more about it on the store page. We figure out that it can only carry up to AIM-9Es, but can also carry out things like AGM-12Bs, 76 FFARs, and 8 Zuni rockets, as well as, of course, bombs, up to 2,000 pound bombs, and is also equipped with flares and chaff. Generally, I have mostly negative feelings about this edition for a number of reasons. First off, it's quite annoying that the US F-5 ends up being a premium. I think I was actually even joking with a friend about how ridiculous that would be, but I guess I should never underestimate Gaijin. However, it's not the biggest deal in the world, and it does give a lot of people who definitely want the F-5, who haven't grabbed any other US jets because they have less interest in them, access to the F-5. But the really annoying part is the price tag, $59.99. If you are in any way interested in simulator battles, I suggest you don't buy this and you actually go and purchase the $59.99 F-5E module for DCS, because DCS is a 100% better simulation experience. Not only is the model higher detail, not only do you not have to pay a repair cost when you get shot down. Not only do you have to not pay for missiles when you shoot them, not only can you customize loadouts as much as you wish, not only are there a lot more camos that are free and no pre-order required, but the cockpit is fully modeled. You can flip all the switches and press all the buttons. In the terms of simulation, there is no solid reason why you shouldn't just start playing DCS and buy the F5E there. It's the same price for the better product. That's the joke of my last video, why I made a video covering the DCS F5, because you might as well just go buy that one. It's quite honestly ridiculous the guys would price one of their vehicles at the same price that DCS sells theirs. I guess actually, if anything, it kind of legitimizes DCS's prices for single vehicles. Now, the thing is that all those arguments kind of fall off when you say that you don't want to play a simulator. DCS is only a simulator and quite a hardcore one at that. So if you want to play the F5, it's either grind out the Chinese tree, which I know you didn't actually do, or fork over enough money to buy yourself a brand new game, or 20 pounds of gummy worms, or the entire series of friends, or three metal barrels. Not really sure what you do with three metal barrels, but only 20 bucks each. I kind of want one. Real question though about this F5 is that I don't think it, and probably a lot of other people don't think that this thing's going to be equal to the current one in game in the Chinese tree at 10.7. Because this thing is limited to aim 9 es many people are suspecting it's going to be 9.7. Though, the F5 is an amazing dogfighting aircraft and is limited to two missiles anyways. So I would not be surprised if the thing snuck up to 10.0 or even 10.3, honestly. But another reason why people may suspect that this thing is going to be 9.7 is because of the Russian pre-order high-tier jet, an Indian Su-7 BMK, which is an export Su-7 that is not much different than the BKL. It has the usual unguided rockets, two 30 millimeter NR-30 cannons, and has a max speed of 2,100 kilometers per hour. It also does not have any guided ordnance, but does have a ballistic computer. I'm not sure if the Tech Tree one has a Blitz computer, but I'll assume so. So with all this together, the Tech Tree version, which is just like this, is only at 9.7. So obviously this jet would be at 9.72. It'd be unreasonable for them to put the premium at a higher battle rating. And if they're going to sell a 9.7 premium for Russia, it wouldn't be too surprising for them to sell a 9.7 premium for the US. My personal thoughts on this vehicle independently is a little disappointing. Su-7s aren't exactly the most amazing jets out there. I'm not super interested in them. If it was a MiG-21, I feel like that would be a better fit. Then both nations' new premiums would be dedicated fighters and quite capable ones at that. I guess you would say which MiG-21 variant? There are a lot of them, so I guess they have a bit to choose from. However, a good amount of them didn't have any guns. I feel like you would want to sell a premium with guns on it. That'd make me lean towards perhaps just the standard MiG-21F, but I don't think that one had any missiles. I was also thinking you could do the MiG-21S or the MiG-21M if you want to keep the Indian theme to it. However, those ones might be a bit more more powerful than a 9.7 aircraft. Perhaps this conundrum that I found myself in trying to find the perfect 9.7 MiG-21 is why Gaiden decided to go with a Su-7. However, I feel that's a bit of a cop-out. I'm sure there somewhere was some sort of MiG-21 you could have put at 9.7 and made a premium. But what really has gotten people thinking about these new premiums isn't exactly is it cool or better or what one should you buy. Buy the F-5, don't buy the Su-7. Su-7s are dumb. It doesn't even have air-to-air -air missiles. What are you gonna do, die? The question is, if these are now the premiums, are we 
gonna see another tier of aircraft. These are basically rank six premiums and we have only max rank six for jets currently. So it would be pretty easy to assume that we're going to be getting some rank seven jets. Though I'll be completely honest, I have zero expectations from Gaijin and I would not be entirely surprised if they just decide to start selling top tier premiums. That's just how low my expectations are of them. But in a more optimistic point of view, it does look quite a lot like we're gonna start seeing some rank seven jets. And those would probably be a MiG-23, obviously for Russia. And for the US, I'm not totally sure because the F-14, while it is also a very large swing wing aircraft, so it would kind of match with the MiG-23. But from what I hear is the F-14 would blow it out of the water or air, I guess. At least that's what I hear. Some proposals I've heard is instead of the F-14, maybe an early F-16 or early F-15. If it was an early F-15, perhaps we could see the F-15J as well for Japan. However, if we go and farm up some quotes from the Gaijin staff, we can see when asked if we are seeing the MiG-23 this update, Stona replies with, it's classified. I could tell you, but I'd have to kill you. And had earlier stated, just as a random comment, I feel the need, dot, dot, dot. Now there is a possibility that he's just being cheeky. The 13th was apparently Top Gun Day, in which you're supposed to quote Top Gun, and perhaps he's just quoting Top Gun. Or perhaps he is implying that there is more Top Gun-esque things to come. Think about it. If they release not only the MiG-28, but also the F-14 in the same patch and then name the patch Danger Zone, it's basically free money. But I don't know. Tell me what you think. Are we going to see the MiG-23? Are we going to see the F-14? Are we going to see some other US jet? Or is Gaijin just going to start selling top tier premiums? And before we go on to the other subject, the last thing about these pre-order packs, many PlayStation players were quite concerned because they definitely do want that black camo for the F-5C, is are they going to be able to get it? Because you can't pre-order things till two days prior to the patch on PlayStation. Well, it's now pinned at the top of the dev blog's comments. PlayStation and Xbox players will get the pre-order bonus if they purchase the pack during the first two weeks of the PlayStation slash Xbox store availability. Now, there's a few other things that came out this week. One of them was another dev blog, a squadron vehicle, the HMS Liverpool. I never liked the name of that town. It's just weird. I don't like liver, so maybe people in Liverpool love liver. I'm not sure why you have a pool of it. Anyways, it is a town class cruiser, essentially a Belfast. I think it might have better anti-air, however, only by a little bit. Generally just kind of boring. I was hoping for it to more interesting for a squadron vehicle, like maybe a Roberts class monitor. Where are those things, man? They're so cool, yet we get none in game. Actually thinking about it, it might not be that balanced, but that's a risk I'm willing to make. The game mode's already kind of messed. And the other news is that the new battle pass has come and we get to see all the cool things it has, sort of. The majority of the vehicles are kind of a letdown. For example, the ship is just a Kirov class like cruiser. We already have a few of those in game, nothing really new. I'm not against having a three Kirov lineup, but it's not something that people have been asking for. The aircraft, some of you seem to really like the French P-39Q, but like, dude, just play the US 39Q. The one tank we actually currently have access to, I got a test drive of, but if you purchase the improved battle pass, you'll get immediate access to, is the Todi 2A, which, well, first of all, it's broken. I've noticed that it shoots a little bit to the right of where you're pointing. I guess it's stuck with simulator gun sights. Not the biggest deal in the world, but it is a bit annoying. Armor-wise, it's pretty lame. The thickest part you have, your gun mantle is only 33, while your lower front plate at a nice angle is 20, and a few other parts are 23. The sides are only 13. Also not the biggest deal in the world because you are only at 1.3. I'd say my biggest concern would be the gun. It's not terrible, but when compared to a lot of other guns that you're going to be going up against, for example, the BT-7, it has a penetration with its basic shell of 70 millimeters and the AP shell of 73 millimeters, while you are unfortunately stuck with 60 and 64 millimeters of penetration, depending on what shell you choose. You do also have access to an AT shell, which is unusual for rank one tanks. Overall, generally, it doesn't stand out in any way, not particularly awful, but also not particularly good. It's sort of just a run in the mill low tier tank. Now, if this was in a Hungarian tech tree with a lot of other Hungarian tanks, it would fit in just fine. I'm sure people would be all right with this vehicle, but paying 2,500 golden eagles or 2,000 and doing a bunch of tasks to unlock this vehicle, I would be rather disappointed. And really, if you want to get down to it, it is a copy of a Swedish tank already in game, just without the high penetrating APDS. And don't you dare hungry Hungarians try to crucify me over that. It's a true fact. Literally a copy of the Swedish design. Pretty good Swedish design. If I was hungry back in the 1930s, I'd probably be satisfied with this. But in modern day War Thunder, not as much. Now there is another vehicle that we have access to, and that is the M6A2E1, the level 75 reward for the battle pass. And it too, I feel, is a letdown. 
around. At 6.7, this is a vehicle that can be killed from the front pretty easily by a T-34 1941. In fact, if you hit the right spots, a 40 millimeter bow force could kill it from the front. While it does have some pretty immense armor plating, it was only a test vehicle and has some large weak points. Most predominantly would be the shoulders of the front plate, being just like on the regular M6A2, about 80 millimeters. Some people have compared this weakness to like the Fertinand, who also has 80 millimeter cheeks at a slight angle. Behind those cheeks on the Fertinand are field tanks that will typically absorb your shell, probably light the Fertinand on fire, not already on fire. Well, on the M6A2E1, if you have ammo there, it could detonate the ammo, and if it's an APHE shell, it will definitely detonate inside your tank, killing a good chunk, sometimes even all of your crew. In my opinion, the vehicle is kind of dead on arrival. If they don't shoot your shoulders, they will just shoot the turret ring, or maybe the area right above your gun. I don't think many people are going to have a hard time dealing with this vehicle once they learn the armor layouts. The reinforced parts definitely will do the work that they need to, but beyond that, there are some massive gaps. Personally, I think it would be better to have not added the frontal plate and given it a nice low battle range so it could be like an oversized glass cannon at like 5.7 or something and yeet tigers. But that's just about all the news I have for you this week, so I hope you enjoyed the video a lot. Before I go, first I'd love to thank my Patreon, G2 members, and Twitch subs. Thank you very much, guys. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns about this video, be sure to hit me up down below in the comments or on my Discord. If you've liked the video, be sure to hit the like button. If you didn't like the Discord, don't hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. I make War Thunder Weekly news videos every Friday and make brand new videos throughout the week, and I like to stream on Saturdays. Also, I am starting another squadron, or well, I already have, a SRB primary squadron, so be sure to go and check that out if you're interested in playing SRB. The other squadron will be around, but it'll be for just general fans of the channel. So anyways, I hope you had a fantastic time, and I hope your day is going fantastic as well. Good night. In the terms of bonus news, you can get some free stuff. The Russian musician, I think, Morgenstern, did a sponsorship with War Thunder. There's not a lot I'm gonna say about the music style or the character himself, but the video assets in the background look fantastic. And there's also a giant snail in the naval part of it. I wonder if this is all part of the Gaijin cinematic universe. But anyways, him doing a sponsorship, new people can of course get free stuff, but so can existing accounts. And I got to pick up the beginner Russian premium boat. You also had a chance, you also had a choice of the tank and the plane. I already had those two. Uh, hopefully Gaijin doesn't take away from me like my wife took the kids.